from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball tonight. Game two of this Lone Star Series matchup this weekend in Houston at Minute Maid Park. First place Texas Rangers won their sixth in a row last night. They take on the Houston Astros tonight. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown, Jim Deshaies on Saturday nights. Jeff Bagwell joins the mix, and the Rangers did a lot of hitting last night, Baggy. They are. They got a great hitting lineup. Uh, another one of those lineups that keeps just coming at you uh, at bat after at bat. They got some speed. They got a lot of power. So uh, it's gonna be a tough test for Mo tonight. He's gonna have to be sharp with his command. Brian Moeller, J.D., on our matchup, and uh, we take a look at Brian looking for win number one of the year on the Jaguar key matchup brought to you by the 2011 Jaguar XJ. And a tough matchup. It is, as Baggy mentioned, a great offense for the Rangers, and the Rangers run a pretty good pitcher to the mound tonight, too. Colby Lewis, a very interesting story. He's 6-4 and four this year, 330 ERA. That 197 opponent batting average, uh, that's the best mark in the American League. Coming up as the Astros try to get the bats revved up. They lost 9-3 to three last night. Justin Smoke drove in four. He homered to left field. Hunter Pence had a pair of doubles. The Astros try to rev up the attack in just a moment. Baseball on Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers in the 2010 F-150. By Jack in the Box. And by the Progressive Insurance Group. Air conditioning pumping here in downtown Houston for game two of this series. And the Rangers are having a nice road trip. They are six and one. First time they've won six in a row on a road trip since 1991. They had it going their way last night, winning at 9 to 3, banging out a dozen hits. Tonight, Ron Washington's club will face Brian Moeller, shooting for his first win in a while. Here's the Rangers starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. Elvis Andrews leads it off at shortstop. It's Michael Young at third base. Ian Kinsler in the number three spot as the second sacker. Cleanup man is left fielder Josh Hamilton. With Houston's David Murphy in right field, Justin Smoke is at first base. Max Ramirez does the catching. Julio Borbone bats eight, playing center field. And it's Colby Lewis on the mound, batting nine, J.D. And Colby Lewis, a uh, very interesting story for the Texas Rangers. 
Uh, originally drafted by them in 1999, first round pick. Came up at a pretty tender age, struggled a little bit, then was hurt, spent some time in the minor leagues, and bounced around from organization to organization. The last two years, he, prior to this one, he pitched in Japan, was outstanding, and has returned to the big leagues as a Ranger, and uh, to this point, he's been one of the better pitchers in the American League. He has 81 strikeouts and 84 and two thirds innings. He's the first Ranger pitcher with four 10 strikeout games in a season since Nolan Ryan in 1991. And he struck out 10 and eight innings in his last start, beating Milwaukee on the road on Sunday, seven to two. And now Lance Berkman and the Astros. So, so, so bottom line, uh, after getting tough last night, a tough matchup again tonight. This Ranger lineup red hot. And the man they're sending to the mound has been very good. As a matter of fact, Colby Lewis was the co-player of the week in the American League uh, last week, along with Josh Hamilton. So a lot of hot players for the Rangers. The Astros struggling coming off that road trip. And they need Brian Muller to step up uh, big time here tonight. Let's take a look at Brian Muller. Scouting report brought to you by Suzuki. Uh, looking for his first win this year. As a matter of fact, looking for his first win since uh, October 20, or excuse me, August 22nd of last year. A little bit deceiving in that he's, he's only had four starts so far this year. And though the numbers aren't good, 0 and 3, 632 ERA. I think he's pitched a little bit better than that. As a matter of fact, I think he's pitched a lot better than that. Uh, one of the issues for him has been right handed batters. Lefties, he's been able to neutralize. They're hitting just 268 against him, but right handed batters hitting better than 400 against Brian. And defensively, it sets up this way. Uh, Lee Gordon Pence patrol the outfield. Infield has Felipe and Manzella on the left side. Kevin Berkman on the right side. Kevin Cash does the catching. Well, Jeff Bagwell, the first year of this ballpark, 2000, it was an outrageous home run ballpark. It's settled down. It's been pretty neutral since then. And as you've watched it unfold, uh, what are the things that you like about hitting here? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's the hitting background. Uh, although it might be pretty far out there at 436, which I think is a real, real long way. Uh, you know, that, that kind of gives the pitcher something to shoot for out in that part of the ballpark. You can pitch to the, you know, left and center, field, uh, left field and right field gaps and the center field. Uh, you have some cheap home runs to left, which uh, everybody knows. And, uh, you know, you kind of get some cheapies to right also, so that can really kind of frustrate a pitcher a lot, which it did in our staff in 2000. Uh, but the hitting background is great. When the roof is closed, uh, there's no there's no outside influences, so it's uh, it just plays normal. And, you know, it, it does get a little warm in here, so the ball might carry a little bit farther. But so far, you know, you look at probably the progression down the road. We've, we've had some. Uh, I mean, look at what Roy's record is here. Mm -hmm. um, if you can pitch, you're going to get the job done here. Strike one to Elvis Andrews, a 282 hitter with no homers. 20 runs batted in. He was 0 for 4 with an RBI last night. Good looking young player, just 21 years old. And it's one ball, one strike. Andrews came in the big trade with Atlanta in July of 07, along with their closer, Naftali Feliz. One of their bullpenners, Matt Harrison. Salta Lamaki is in the minors now, and another player for Mark Teixeira. And Ron Mayhay, big deal for the Rangers, and they are reaping rewards from that right now. Well, what an exciting thing it is for an organization to have a shortstop in the future being only 21 years old. That's, uh, that's got to be something that they're very proud of. Andrews hits the fly ball to Hunter Pence in right, and it's Michael Young next. You played against him, you watched him for years. A very solid right handed batter, and normally he makes some solid contact baggage. Michael Young? Yep. He can hit. Uh, <laughs> bottom line, he's played, what, three positions now? An all star, I think, at every single one of them. Um, almost bank on 200 hits every year and hitting 300, driving in 100 runs, uh, playing second, short, and third. Um, I don't know. I don't think you can say, you know, he's probably one of those kids that, you, you know, you just don't, he doesn't get enough credit. If he played in New York, he'd be the biggest superstar, one of the bigger superstars in the game. Uh, to do what he's done, you know, when A-Rod was there playing short, he was playing second. Uh, then he went to short after A-Rod left, and then all of a sudden Andrews came up and they asked him to play third. And, you know, he's going to make another all-star team there. So it's uh, it's been a pleasure to watch him play. He's a great kid. He's a baseball player, too, which I enjoy. 88 hits. Ties him for third with Billy Butler. And it's a one ball, two strike count for Brian Moeller. You talk about Mo pitching better than the numbers, and certainly that was the case last time out in New York. He worked four and two thirds, allowed four runs. He walked five in that game. In the right field, Hunter Pence. 
Well, that's probably it, though, huh, J.D.? We talk about, you know, before we got there, he has to have good command. And, you know, Mo's not a guy that can put a lot of guys on base. And, you know, that's probably what's gotten him in trouble more than anything well, else. You know, in that New York game, he was so good getting in on the hands of the left-handed hitter. Hitting the lefties popping up. He's getting in on their knuckles and just, you know, weak little pop-ups. And then he kind of, you know, had one bad inning in it. You know, that Yankee lineup so disciplined. And I, and I thought the, the zone for him early in that game was pretty big. And then when he needed it most, there was a couple of key at bats. You know, I don't know if it was Cano or who the hitter was. One of the lefty hitters dropping that backdoor slider. And, he, and, and all of a sudden he couldn't get it called. And, and it kind of changed the, the whole situation for him. Somebody with a big name on their back that, that they couldn't get a call. <laughs> yeah. That was the one part I liked when I was actually good at some point in my career is that I could get some calls like that. And the entire Yankee lineup can get that. Kinsler looks at it. It's a one ball one strike count to a man with an eight game hitting streak 278 average and he's driven in 17 but he had an injury to his ankle to open the season. So he has been limited to 162 at bats at this point. And so you know this lineup is awfully good and very dangerous but, but to that end probably not as tough to pitch to as a Yankee lineup because they're not as disciplined. You know, so if you, a, a guy like Moeller who's you know when he's on his game can really spot the ball. Hopefully he can take advantage of that and get this club to swing at his pitch. Whereas the Yankees, they just weren't willing to do that. And the Yankees, you're right. The Yankees don't swing a lot of pitches. They don't have to because we just talked about. It. Yeah, <laughs> they get called balls. <laughs> two and two now. Andy Rodriguez, the losing pitcher last night, went three innings. And the Astros used four relief pitchers. Felipe Paulino tomorrow afternoon. Three balls, two strikes. In Moeller's career, he's six and five against the Rangers. His ERA against them is 5.05. Michael Barn in right center takes care of the third out. Moeller has a one, two, three, third. Capital One, here's the way Brad Mills handed in his lineup card tonight to this umpiring crew. Michael Bourne in center field, Jeff Capitcher second base, Lance Bertman first base, Carlos Lee left field, Hunter Pence with a pair of doubles in right field, Pedro Feliz at third base, Kevin Cash the catcher, Tony Manzel is a shortstop with Ryan Moeller on the hill. Starting pitcher brought to you by Suzuki right-hander Colby Lewis, 30 years of age. As I mentioned earlier, it's been a long and winding road for him starting his career with the Rangers now coming back as a successful major league pitcher that 197 batting average against that's the best mark in the American League only Ubaldo Jimenez in all of baseball better if you're looking for a chink in the armor a 10 home runs allowed so far for Lewis this year gets a lot of outs in the air the guys that run them down Hamilton Borbone and Murphy tonight Guerrero gets the night off Young and Andrews over the left side Kinsler smoke the right side Max Ramirez does the catch. Michael Bourne gets it started. He was 0 for 5 last night. 
Strike one for Lewis. 253 for Bourne. No homers. 11 runs batted in for Michael. He's hitting 200 in the month of June. Lewis has got four basic pitches fastball, curveball, slider change. It's very good breaking stuff. Bakersfield, California, went to Bakersfield College. Signed a two year contract for five million to come back from Japan and pitch for the Rangers. Two and two. Pitch for the carp over Hiroshima and really lit it up for a couple of years. 26 and 17 with a 282 ERA for them. Top to the left side, Michael Young gets it on one big bounce. Quick throw and dug out by Smoke. One out. Nice play right there. As they say, do or die. Yeah. Fortunately, Michael he died. When you talk about the other positions he's played, he has pretty good range. Well, he can play shortstop in the big leagues. He got some pretty good range. And one more hop, he's not, not going to get him. So he had to charge hard. And a little short hop, picked there by the first sacker, Jimmy Joyce. First base umpire tonight. Strike to Jeff Kappinger. Jeff, a 289 hitter, leads the Astros starting lineup and batting average. He has one homer, 22 runs batted in. And he rolls that with foul after getting two hits in last night's game. Jeff's been pretty steady for the season. That's not always the case for a number two hitter. Baggy, sometimes his average is going to fluctuate because he's giving himself up. Yeah, it does, but he's just a good hitter. Uh, you know, he um, he's not trying to do too much over there. He's he's you know he's going to work the count. He's going to spray the ball around the field. And generally, guys that do that are going to be good hitters. And, uh, that's what Jeff's done for us all. It's tough, and that's who he started the year out for us. And then he's he stepped in and just uh, nonstop giving us quality at bats night in and night out. Two outs now on the. Ball third strike for Lewis. It's Lance Berkman, 242, six homers, 28 driven in. He was one for three last night. Well, the good thing for Lance, too, is Marvin's behind the plate. You know, yesterday I think he was hiding that Snickers bar over there at first when he charged him. So just in case he needs another one, he can be right there for him. Lance gets hungry out there. You, you got to understand that. Brings a whole new meaning to a hungry ball player. Uh, you should see when they do that when they do that opening day lineups. He's dying out there. How about your buddy Craig Biggio when they moved him to the outfield? He had to run all the way out there. Put he did. Those extra miles over the course of a year. And Craig will be the first to tell you how many miles he had to run to going out there. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. He did uh, kind of have that measured. He brought that up a few times. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it was it was nonstop. What guys will do to sacrifice themselves for the club? Well, and, that, and that's what you got to talk about with Craig, and that's what he did. He sacrificed for his club, so we got to applaud him for that. Both pitchers, one, two, three in the first inning, no score.
still time to be awake. Only the second inning time for our Jack in the Box standings. The Rangers American League rankings right there for you. Their third in batting average. Fourth in runs batted in and runs scored. Their third in hits. Pretty consistent offensive attack. And with two outs and runners in scoring position, they are number one. 299 is the batting average in those situations. Josh Hamilton's done a lot for them. There's ball one to a man with a 14 game hitting streak, a 327 average, 16 homers, 50 runs batted in. Well, he's having a hell of a, a month, isn't he? Big, big year for Hamilton. Yeah, he's back in top form again. Yeah, he sure is. Had a down year last year, and he's been dogged by injuries. That moved to left field seems to be agreeing with him. Yeah. You know, and that's not really that small of a, a left field over there in, in Arlington. I, I mean, I don't think so. They, you know, they talk about the ball flying out. And usually, it flies out to right. This one goes to left. Carlos Lee. Got somebody there. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. Well, what a nice hitter's park in Arlington. Yeah, it, it is. I don't think I've gotten any hits when I was there, but <laughs> I know a lot of guys. I watched a lot of guys get a lot of hits there. But it, you know, it, it's a real fast track. Um, you know, as as the summer goes along, you know the grass kind of dies a little bit, so they have to cut it a little bit shorter. So the ball gets through the infield a lot. In the outfield, it gets over to shortstop head. It's usually a triple, uh, and then they got that wind tunnel basically in right center. So you know, they, they enjoy it over there. I'm sure they do, as as the numbers, you know, speak for themselves. Strike one to David Murphy, 261, two homers, 21 driven in. He was 0 for 1 last night. David back home where he grew up, went to Klein High School and then Baylor University. And he is the fourth outfielder. It was Vladimir Guerrero playing right field last night, and he's resting tonight. Which we're not, you know, not really too disappointed in. Although David's a great hitter himself, but uh, Vlad has been just a tremendous, tremendous player over his career. But I was just wondering, you think Drayton's rooting for this kid or no? Well, yeah, the Baylor guy. Yeah, the Baylor yeah. guy. You know how he is about that. Huh? Yeah. Probably not at the moment, Rudy. Really. No, probably not. Two and two. Guerrero, though, is just we were talking about him before the game. What an unusually fine talent he's been at the plate for years. A very astute acquisition by the Rangers. Well, the thing about Vlad is he just there's just no way to pitch him. You know, you you throw a ball over his head and he tomahawks it down the right field line. You throw it down and then he tomahawks it. Down. I mean, he under, undercuts it down the right field line. You throw something away, he pulls it over the fence and left. You just you have no idea what to do with him. And it's, I mean, as a pitcher, I, I just don't know. I don't. I wouldn't even know where to start with him. You got to be thinking about Hall of Fame consideration for him in a couple more years, right? I would. Um, you know, he he was such a dynamic player when he was with Montreal. He could do everything. He stole bases, hit for power. Uh, played great defense. Uh, didn't get to see him as much when he was with uh, Anaheim, but obviously a great player out there and a little resurg resurgence right now. You know, he's come back and the Texas Rangers took a chance on him, uh, and he's he's come through more than they probably they ever expected. And the nice thing about the DH is that he has played the outfield in these interleague games, but that's probably going to be about 95 percent of his outfield work for the year. So he can keep those legs healthy for the rest of the season. Yeah, and I'm sure that was their consideration they had when they signed him, and saying, you know, he doesn't have to go run out there anymore. He can just sit on the bench and worry about smashing the ball. Just let him hit, play him a little bit out there. And, and by all accounts, I, I mean, I never heard a negative word about him as far as being a teammate. I mean, he sounds like a good guy. Yeah, yeah every, every time I've been around him, he's, yeah. he couldn't have been nicer. Murphy fouls it away. Here's something you can. Speak to that kind of hit me yesterday. When you're playing the field and you're, you don't have a DH in your league, you're diving, you're injuring your wrist, your hands. When you're DHing, yeah, you might get jammed, you might have some hand injuries of that nature, but not having to play the field, if you only DH all year, that could be a major plus, can't it? Well, it can, but. You have to have the right mentality for that. I, I would never, ever want to be a DH. I, I need to play the field. If, you know, our, our whole, you know, Craig and I, for sure, our, our mentality was if I'm not getting any hits, nobody else is getting any hits either. So we were diving all over the place. And you know what it does? It, it takes my mind off the at bat. You know, if I have a really at bat, I strike out of three sliders in the dirt, at least I can go out there and play defense and know that I can help the team out in some way. Uh, if I had to go back into the dugout and sit there and wait, Eight more batters to come up. I, I, I'm going to struggle. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to go crazy thinking about every little thing that can, that went wrong in the at bat, and 
and nowadays it's even worse because we have so much stuff down below that the fans don't see that, that they'll show every single pitch, every single angle. So you analyze so much, and by the time you get up there, your next at bat, you're going, oh, my God. <laughs> You know, instead of just, you know, see it and hit it, you're, you're just, you've, you've seen so many things, and you're like, oh, my God, my foot's going this way, my hands are going this way, I'm doing this, and next thing you know, you forget about what you're supposed to do, and that's just see the ball and hit it. Mm -hmm. When you were DHing, did you go up and watch video between the bats? Of course. <laughs> it was there. I wish it wasn't there. <laughs> Look for that ball. Twelve pitches. Yeah. And uh, able to reach, really worked them all over, fouled off some tough pitches, earned the walk. <laughs> Justin Smoke. Smoke had a big night last night. Four runs batted in. He reached the Crawford boxes with a two run homer, his seventh of the year. He's driven in 28 with a 211 average. Another of the young Ranger players. They've had some good recent drafts. Brought some homegrown talent to this club. And Paul won. And they really have a nice mix. In the People that were watching during the pregame show, the interview that Greg Lucas did with Nolan Ryan, Nolan talked about that. They've got some talented young players, but they have some uh, solid veterans that have been around a while. So as the youngsters go through the typical ups and downs that you do as a young player, the veterans there kind of as steady as she goes to kind of carry the load and let these guys learn a little bit at the big league level. And you're right, Jimmy, that, that's very important. Um, you know, young kids are going to go through some tough times, and you know they're going to be in the clubhouse. They're going to have their head down. You know, after the game, they're, you know, Hunter, you know, has taken. You know, everybody's talked about his work ethic, and after a game, he'll go hit for two hours, and then he'll be in early trying to hit for two hours. And you know, sometimes you got to say, hey, man, pull the reins back a little bit. You know, it's a long year. I mean, you're going to wear yourself out, and probably more than anything, you're going to mentally wear yourself out. So, you know, let the game come to you. The great thing about this game is that every single night. You get a chance to play. It's not like football. It's not even really like basketball or hockey, you know, where they play half the games. You get to play every single night. So, you know, you might go 0 for 4 tonight, but you know what? I got a chance to go 4 for 4 tomorrow. So, uh, that's that's the great part about having veterans, and they can explain that to the younger kids. I saw a quote the other day from John Wooden with his passing, and it said, Never mistake activity for achievement. You know, uh, yeah, you want to work hard, but you, there's a point where you could be wasting time or just, you know, just because you're doing something doesn't mean you're doing something meaningful. It's a high drive to right field. It's got some sock behind it and smoke as it is second home run of this weekend series. One from each side of the plate. That's number eight of the year, giving him 30 runs batted in and a 2 nothing Ranger lead. The Ranger faithful making a lot of noise here in the ballpark. Brian, as I mentioned, against the Yankees, especially early, was very successful getting the cut fastball in on the left handed hitters. This time he tries, and Smoke just doesn't let him in there. He gets the hands pulled in. And uh, last night's home run I thought was a little cheap. Not, not this one. He approached that one pretty good. He did. He pulled his hands in nicely there. You could see it on that last replay how his, his hands came straight from his, his launching thing right into his belt, basically. Max Ramirez is catching tonight. There's ball one to him. Last night it was Trainer doing the catching, and Trainer had a couple of hits and drove in a run. Matt Trainer. Ramirez is hitting 218. Here's the swing. You can see it right here. He's, his hands are up there. He gets there, and then watch all of a sudden they come straight down into his belt Ugh. and gets the head out. Kind of like in golf when they talk about the slot. Dropping yeah, your hands into the slot. Yeah. yeah. Here is 25 years old from Venezuela. He goes out of play. He was at Triple A Oklahoma last year, but played some for the Rangers in 08. Now the funny thing is, when you do stuff like that as a hitter, when you bring your hands in, you come back to the dugout and go, How did "I do that." You know, you're not even it's sure how it happened, right? but it just happens. Uh, and the one thing you know when that happens is you're on the right track. Because you're doing the right things, you're you're prepared for everything else, and all of a sudden the ball comes in, and you can actually take your hands and do that. And, uh, he's in he's in a pretty good slot right there, so we got to kind of be careful of that. Now three balls, two strikes. Astros are two and two in Moeller's four starts, filling in for Bud Norris in the rotation. And 
and a walk. Second of the inning. Well, Jimmy, we talked about it a second ago. You know, you know, Mo, he, he's, he's not a guy that can really walk. I know he's got to nibble and be fine and all that, but, you know, we had to walk, and next thing you know, we had a two run homer. Yeah, and I think the key is you got to realize no matter how good a lineup is, there's certain guys you have to attack, and you hope to be in a position where you can pitch around the most dangerous hitter. Sometimes you don't have that opportunity because of base runners, but the. You know the walks at this point of the lineup, I think, are more problematic than the, than the ones in the middle. Blunt by Barbon goes foul. Oh, and, and with a lineup like this, what you're doing is you turn the lineup over. So instead of maybe getting four at bats a night, you, you might get five at bats, which can hurt you once we get later in the innings. 26 pitches now for Brian in this inning alone, 39 overall. You know, it's, it's such a cat and mouse game between pitcher and hitter because if you really you think about it, pitchers generally give hitters way more credit than they deserve, and hitters give pitchers more credit than mm -hmm. they deserve, too. So uh, it, it's very interesting because, you know, we talk to our minor league kids a lot and just, you know, say, okay, the best hitter on this team right now, if Guerrero's not in there, somebody hitting probably 307. So how many times is he going to get a hit? You know, it's just, you know, you can make a mistake right down the middle. It doesn't mean he's actually going to get a hit off it. Not saying that's where you want to live, but you know we, we give them too much credit. But I think the pitchers more generally give us more credit than we deserve. Yeah, and I think well, you know Maddox was a great example. I, I think that you just play the percentage game. If you throw a high percentage of quality strikes, you may have a game where you get lit up. But if you do it start after start after start, the percentages are going to break in your favor. Well, that's what Burley does too over there with the White Sox. You know, he doesn't have overpowering great stuff, but he throws tons of strikes and he just keeps coming at you. Colby Lewis, who had two hits and drove in two runs in his last game, puts one in the air for Carlos Lee. And it's two runs on one hit, and a man left, two nothing Rangers. to be part of the excitement of the all-new Chevy Malibu Diamond Edition for your chance to sit in a suite for an upcoming Astros game courtesy of your Houston area Chevy dealers log on to FoxSportsHouston.com and click on the Chevy Malibu Sweet Night giveaway Brownie back to you thank you Mark two to nothing the Rangers have the lead for Colby Lewis Lewis two and four on the road this season another good crowd tonight there were 33,951 last night in this Lone Star Series has really packed them in over the years. It's usually a weekend series in both locations and it will be again next weekend when the Astros and Rangers move on up to Arlington. And we're complaining about the heat here. Wait till oh. we get up to Arlington. <laughs> Carlos Lee 
Leans back from strike one. 224 for El Caballo. 10 homers, 37 driven in. He's driven in 16 runs in 16 games in June. That's hanging for the shortstop. Elvis Andrews near second base. And one out for Lewis. Case in point right there, what we were talking about. That fastball. Right down right the there, middle. Yeah. And you pop it up. It's, it's just amazing. You talked about Maddox earlier. I never, I, I've never seen anybody throw the ball down the middle more than him and guys take it. Because it moves so much, but he knows it. And, it, and he's, he's got a reputation as Greg Maddox. He's like, oh no, he's going to throw the ball in the outside corner. Next thing you know, man, that ball was right down the middle. Well, you, 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 I mean, I don't really think like a hitter, but I try to get inside the head of hitters. And when I watched him pitch, I always felt like guys were trying to think with him. And that's yeah, you don't want to do that. You, yeah. to do. you don't want to think with him, I promise you. Well, there's a, Not that Maddox. His brother Mike. <laughs> I don't want to think with him either. <laughs> no. He, 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 he thinks outside the box. That's all. Mad dog. No balls, two strikes to Hunter Pence on a four game hitting streak. And last night he ripped a pair of doubles. He's uh, swinging about a lot better, huh, Brownie? Yeah, he has. He really and has. The other night in Kansas City, a couple fastballs got by him, and then that third one, he turned around and hit it to left field for a two run double. Elvis Andrews throws him out, but yeah, he, such a quick. Bad, and yet that can kind of work against him, can it? Sometimes. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a quick bat. I mean, that's always a good thing. It just, you know, he, I think he's doing a lot better now. He's getting a little bit better with both eyes on the baseball, uh, and just letting the baseball come to him. It's very hard to get out there and go get the baseball. If the baseball comes to you, you're going to see it for about another six inches, which is a ton. Uh, you know, from 60 feet, six inches. Instead of seeing it from 60, you get an extra six inches, and that's a ton with the bat, uh, the bat head, and it's. Uh, I think that's what Hunter's done a lot better right now. You don't see him swinging at those sliders like he used to. That's I mean, every right. once in a while, we saw one now, just just a second ago, but everybody does that. Mm -hmm. Pedro Feliz has a 2-0 count. And it's three balls, no strikes for Colby Lewis. He had surgery. A few years ago and doesn't throw as hard now, but has better location. And maybe rush to the big leagues. He had a big arm as a kid and first round picks, and maybe he got pushed a little bit too quickly. Some believe that is the case and he struggled, but probably more of the injuries than anything knocked him back. Well, I mean, there, there opens up another can <laughs> of worms. Is, is it too quickly? Right. Uh, you know, I have my feelings upon that. I, I, I really, my feelings are is, you know, if you can't handle it up there and you get sent down and you can't get back, then you're never going to be any good in, right, anyway. And right. that's my feeling, whether it's a pitcher or a hitter or whatever. Now, this thing with Strasburg, obviously, this is something a little bit different than anybody's seen in a while because of the electricity of his stuff. But I think they're going about it the right way. You know, they try to protect him, whether it's organizational, organizationally, uh, arbitration-wise, or, or whatever. But. Limiting his, his number of innings, I think, is important for a young kid. Lewis gets strike out number three, and it's 2 nothing race.
We move to the third here at Minute Maid. Rangers leading it two to nothing. Of course, tomorrow is Father's Day, and the Astros have the perfect gift for dad. The Father's Day six-pack lets your dad choose the six Astros games he wants to see during the 2010 season, and he's really going to like this part. Plans start at just $42. Go to Astros.com slash fathers to get your tickets. Brownie? Thanks, Bart. There's Brian Moeller with ball one to Elvis Andrus. Top of the third inning underway. Two to nothing Rangers. Andrus hit a fly ball to right his first time up. And it's 2-0 oh with Jeff Bagwell joining us on a Saturday night and Jim Shays. As the sunlight streams through. Kind of a difficult time of the evening to play the infield, I would think. You know what, Brownie? It's not as bad as you think. Um, you guys came from Milwaukee a little was it, I don't know, a couple weeks ago maybe? Um, it doesn't get any worse than Milwaukee. Okay. And I think you guys were talking about it on the air. And a couple guys missed some balls. You cannot see anything on that is the first base from third base to uh, anywhere. Uh, it very, very poorly done as far as thinking about those, those I don't know what they are, what they would call windows that come in and shine light. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very difficult. But here it's not bad. It looks bad on TV. Uh, might look bad from right here, but it's it's not bad playing there at all. Strike to Young, and as far as having the roof closed, I think the pitchers would certainly prefer that. How about the hitters? Well, I mean, you, to a man, everybody's going to say they want the roof closed. You remember we had that big tiff kind of in the uh, World Series. We wanted it closed, and I think it was the commissioner's office wouldn't let us close it, which yes. we all thought was ridiculous since it's our stadium. But um, you know, I. I uh, I just like it. I like baseball in this stadium to not have the wind change, you know, every single part of the game. I remember Rocket and Andy used to hate it when, when, when it was open because the wind was so heavy. You know, I remember my pants blowing like crazy, but they said when they get to their balance point, they would almost rock a little bit, and they felt like that was going to, you know, throw off their command. That being said, you know, we can go to Wrigley Field and, <laughs> you know, have a lot of fun with the wind. So it's, you know. It's all different, but we, we as players here, I, I think we mostly, to a man, would prefer it uh, closed. Change up there from Moeller, J.D. Yeah, it sure was. We talked about Brian's struggles with right-handed hitters this year, and breaking out maybe a little bit of a different wrinkle, throwing that change up. Tough pitch to execute, but he threw a dandy there. Down in the way. The pitch has a tendency to drift back over the plate into the hitter's swing, but that was a great one. Young strikes out, two outs for Kinsler now. Oh, that's a good pitch right there. Yeah, sure looked like it. All one for Marvin Hudson. Kinsler doesn't usually walk like he did last night, but tied his career high with three walks, and that was a big part of that game. Uh, his first walk preceded the Vladimir Guerrero bases loaded walk, and that's what Brad Mills was talking about tonight before the game. He said the bases loaded walk to Guerrero didn't bother him all that much. It was the walks to Andrews and Kinsler prior to that. Kinsler looks like he'd be a hell of a softball player. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he kind of just sits there, you know, doesn't get too deep in his stance and all that, and just takes a rip. He's like his, uh, his old teammate in college, Pedroia, right? Dustin Pedroia's got that same approach. He yeah. sure does. One thing that people usually like is the different hitting mannerisms. He's got that little twist at home play. Yeah, I just watch a hitter and he'll sometimes do something you don't see from anybody else. Well, I mean that that just goes back to the old adage is there's not one way to do it. If there was one way we'd all do it. it Always strikes out. Kinsler has a good one, two, three, third inning, two nothing range.
inside Minute Maid Park where the Astros are 14 and 21 and trailing the Rangers 2 to nothing. The bottom of the third arrives. Six in a row set down by Colby Lewis. And it'll be Kevin Cash leading off the home third inning. 229 for Kevin, two homers, four runs batted in. We were talking earlier before the break just about how hard it is to hit, and, and it's it, it's very hard to be mechanical in baseball. You have to get a certain point where you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable up there, you try and act like somebody else, it's just not going to work out for you. And that's why you see different stances. Everybody has a different stance. Now, you'll see some young kids come up copying guys. You see a ton of A-rods out there, especially when I go see the minor leagues. You'll see a ton of guys yeah. trying to do that. You see a ton of Manny, Manny Ramirez type swings. Um, not many Jeff Bagwell swings, which is good. Uh, First, the whole generation yeah, of just the little leaders. I did, and I apologize yeah. to all those kids and fathers uh, that, that they had to start with that and say, no, 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 not, don't stand don't up do straight, that, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there was a time, and I remember hearing about this years and years ago the, in the Mets, that they were trying to teach all their minor league pitchers to pitch like Seaver, have that drop and drive delivery. And, and uh, I think there's a danger to, to get that kind of groupthink mentality within or, an organization. Well, this guy does it really well, so we're all going to copy him. Yeah. I mean, not a bad guy to copy, but yeah. it might not work yeah. for you yeah. or your arm. Yeah, that style of pitching is very difficult. Unless you're big and strong, I think you know, he, he was so strong in his lower body. Right. Or long with a catch of that cash fly ball. But when you see a guy, you see some hitters, like you, you were funky the way you were spread out. Uh, Craig Council comes to mind. Well, that had to come from somewhere. What did Council come with that? Then the hands way up high. Well, for some reason, he got up there and said, okay, what I want to do is make sure that I get a path to the ball that goes straight down to the ball. So the best way for that. Is to stick my hand straight up in the air because yeah. it's going to fall eventually. But once it gets to that point of fall, then I can go straight to the baseball. Uh, some guys remember Eric Davis, JD. Obviously, you remember, and Brownie, you remember. Mm -hmm. He carried his hands by his mm -hmm. belt. Yeah. But what he did is he would bring his hands back up before, you know, the pitch was delivered. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, you know, you could probably get in there a little bit on ED. But I mean, look at Albert. Not, not many guys swing like Albert. Um, and he's he's pretty successful. So I mean, there's there's just different theories. There's different ways. You know, like you said, Brownie earlier, some guys have quick bats. So they can carry their hands a little bit lower. Some guys have to carry them up a little higher and get straight to straight to the baseball. And two to Manzella. It's just a constant battle of trying to figure it out just to get to this point in the big leagues. You might start off in the minor leagues saying, "This is how I'm going to hit," and we we do this all the time in the minor leagues. You know, we we give the kids a, you know benefit of the doubt. You know, they've had success in high school or college. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Bart now in right field. Bart. All right, Brownie, time for the progressive fan of the game. Back into second, Justin Smoke smoked the ball up here into the upper deck and right, and it was caught by Taylor. Catch it on the fly? No, I caught it on the bounce, actually. Yeah, well, it came up here quickly, so you ended up giving it to? My mom right here, Starling. Starling, is she? And you threw the ball back out. Why'd you make that decision? Well. Peer pressure? No, no peer pressure. I'm all Astro, and that wasn't an Astro ball, so. So there you go. Yeah. Nice job. Well, we don't want uh, good deeds to go unrewarded, so you don't go home empty-handed. You're the progressive fan of the game. Okay, Starling Ishii. Nice toss and way to not hit Hunter with the ball on the way back out. Yeah, Brownie, back to you. All right, thanks, Bart. Brian Muller, the batter. No balls, two strikes, and two outs. One for five at the plate. Down to the shortstop and nine straight for Colby Lewis to open this game with the Rangers leading it two to nothing.
Justin Smokes two run homer in the second has given the Rangers a two nothing lead as we move to the fourth. All you can eat is available for every home game. Get a mezzanine ticket and all you can eat hot dogs, nachos, peanuts, popcorn, soda, water, all for just 25 bucks. Gives me indigestion just talking about it. This offer is available as a convenient six game flex plan also and it's great for groups. To buy tickets, go to Astros.com. Guys. Thank you, Bark. Two to nothing, Rangers here. Our league leaders brought to you by your Texas four dealers. The top sluggers in the majors come your way. It's Miguel Cabrera, Robinson Cano, Justin Morneau, Andre Ethier, and Josh Hamilton. And slugging percent. Wow, some pretty big numbers there. Big numbers. Now, the story on Hamilton, uh, Baggy, they say, is that he had the toe tap mechanism before, and he gave that up about a month ago, and ever since then, he took off. Well, Brownie, that, and that's what we talked about before the break. It's just the constant adjustments you have to make in this game. You see what he did, what he did to uh, he spread out a little bit more. It was never that spread out. He used to toe tap back and then stride. So now he's just kind of picking his foot up and then, you know, driving from there. So that's his, see how he, he just kind of picks it up and puts it down. With a toe tap, he, he brings his, his, his foot back and then forward. So he's just kind of trying to keep a little bit steady, keep his head steady, uh, you know, to make it a little bit more consistent. Well, that's pretty much what you did. You didn't stride much. I actually, at times, I str strided back and back. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, that was not intentional. <laughs> it just kind of happened. But it kept your head level. That was that was the whole idea of my my stance and my swing. Uh, did I, you know, think it was going to look like that once it happened? No. Uh, is that all I had at the time? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it, it worked out sometimes and it didn't some other times, but that's just, you know, it's just something that I did. And, you know, that's that's the beauty of this game. It's just, you know, it's not milk and cookies. There's all kinds of different things that go around. It's 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 a fun game to watch because there's just so many ways to get it done. One and two to Murphy. Murphy is the guy that started it last time with that 12 pitch at bat, ended up drawing the walk in front of the smoke home run. He's two and two. Much more of an upright hitter than some guys we see. Yeah, he's another guy. That he, he's just not trying to do too much up there. He's trying to battle. He's trying to get a good pitch. He can drive the ball and hit it out of the ballpark, but that's probably not his game. He's, he's more of a gap guy, as you can see. He's got 13 doubles. Uh, you know, he's he's the kind of guy that's going to battle like he did the last time. Get on back, get on base. Uh, you know, and, and hopefully the guy behind you. Well, he just got on base for the second time via a walk. It's the Coors Light sixth inning. Time now for the Coors Light freeze cam. We see a cold hard blast from Coors Light. There's a shot from Justin Smoke. He hits the blast to right field. Second deck. And Smoke home run number eight. I never enjoyed watching this cold hard blast when it's not our guys. Yeah. <laughs> that was a blast. Can't we wait for that guys in the truck next time to <laughs> one of our guys hits a home run? Yeah. Does it have to be in fourth inning every time? Problem is we've been waiting too long this year. Sometimes <laughs> we have to drag out a home run from the previous game. <laughs> I forget the beginning of that, guys. It's the chorus. This <laughs> ball went to Ramirez to Smoke now, and Smoke with that long drive in the second inning will be followed by Ramirez. Rangers really cashed in on the bases on balls last night. Oh, hello. Well, I think most teams do. You know, when you get when you can get five walks in the game, there's a good chance that you're going to score a bunch of runs. If you get a good pitching, then you're probably going to win that ball game. Because if you think about it, besides a base hit with somebody up, somebody on, it's just like getting a base hit. You got to run around first base. They got 12 hits and seven walks last night. So that's 19 base runners. 19 right base there. runners. Exactly right. I like my chances of 19, yeah, 19 base yeah, runners. Yeah, yeah. Rounding into a bunch of double plays, you're going to score a bunch of runs. Double sure. play sure would be sweet here. Brian's only gotten the one out on the ground so far. A sinker, a change up away, we can get one right here. Yes. There's the ball to the right of Manzella. It goes to second, and oh, no come chance. on, Cap. 
I gave it to you. It's a change up. <laughs> I mean, come on. Smoke reaches two outs for Ramirez now. Well, change up away. Yeah, well, exactly what the baggy ordered. I don't think you got a good hand yeah. on that. Tommy may have given him a little bit of a change up. Yeah. And that's smart not to try to force something and throw the ball away. Ramirez next. Nice pickup by Cash on ball one. Kevin Cash uh, played collegially at Florida State during the College World Series. He got uh, knocked around by TCU this afternoon. Horn Frogs doing it. Matthew Perk pitching? I believe so. One ball, one strike. And he was the Rangers' uh, first round pick last year. They were unable to sign him. You guys have been around here a little bit longer than I have. Not too much longer, obviously, but. Uh, Houston and Texas area baseball has just come a, a long, long way, hasn't it, in college? It has. I mean, all the teams now, the Horn Frogs and the Cougars, and obviously Texas has been good for a while. Baylor's a good team now. You're right. Um, it's, it's fun to watch. You know, even when they have this classic here, when they get all these kids in there, there's some great baseball going on. Very good. Better throw rice in there. We're going to get letters. I'm not throwing rice. U of H. That first baseman down there? <laughs> Throw it first. I was kidding with that. I set Jimmy up for that one because <laughs> obviously here in Houston we know about Rice and we know about University of Houston, but uh, what a program Rice has put together down here every year, year in and year out. And TCU making its first trip to the College World Series. Yeah. Lance at 30, but well, I don't know how old Lance is now, 34, 35, is still scared to death of Wayne Grant. Great and two. Going to back up at first base and play behind Smoke. And it's ball four. Fourth walk for Moore. And again, that, uh, the guys at the bottom of the other guy, you know, awfully cautious there to Ramirez. And remember, he doesn't have good numbers, but you know, he's a pretty good minor league resume coming up through. He's thought of as more of an offensive guy than a defensive player, and, and actually was really bad defensively behind the plate until uh, just the past year or so. He's made some pretty good strides back there. But, um, you know, again, that goes back to that conversation we had earlier. That, you know, you, you kind of pick and choose who you're going to nibble with and who you're going to be aggressive with. And, and generally, I think you want to be a little bit more aggressive with these guys at the bottom of the order. Well, Bowen takes strike one. He hit a fly ball to left in the second inning. I saw Roger do that a ton. Roger would mm -hmm. sit there. He'd wait. He'd walk this guy. Be very, very fine. Wouldn't he'd say, "I'm not going to get that much at the plate." And he'd take his chances down here at the end of the end of the lineup. Yeah. And, uh, that's just smart. Of course, you have to be win about 360 games too. That <laughs> but don't you think for for a pitcher of the caliber of Roger Clemens or Boy Halliday this year, the move? From the American League to the National League can be just a major improvement in lowering that ER. Uh, that, I mean, they'll be the first to tell you. You know, they, they know that they got the pitcher down at the end, and you know the shortstop, whatever. I mean, they uh, they'll pitch to that, and they'll be the first ones to tell you that. You know, they kind of licked their chops when they came over here to the uh, to the National League that they were going to chance to pitch to a kind of a lower batting average, not as much of a, a threat in the lower half of our lineups. Mm -hmm. now, with the game showing off. So much great pitching this year, Baggy. It seems to have turned now. A lot of one to nothing games, three to two games. Compared to, we'll say, that 98 yeah. club you played on. Yeah, and I, I was kind of thinking about that this morning. I, I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, you know, I agree that there's some there's some good pitching out there and some great pitching, but is it that much better than it than it's been in, in years past? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, the, the stats say it is. So let's go with it. It is. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if guys have just gotten off to slow starts. I mean, Lance Berkman normally is at, you know, 14, 15 home runs. Same with Carlos Lee. Uh, and you know, I think you go team by team, it's the same way. Yes. But, you know, we have Corey Hart has 17 homers. Right. You know what I mean? So home runs and 
averages and stuff like that are out there. It, it just uh, maybe it's just one of those years. I, I don't know. Well, it seems like the, the bullpen arms are just a little stock with power arms for most clubs. A lot of relievers are coming for a 95 for one inning. Uh, there it is. No, there's, there's no doubt. Bullpens are very strong right now. Uh, you know, and, and it turns games into six inning games. And, you know, it's tough. It's tough when you come, you know, you, you battle for six innings, and next thing you know, you got three separate pitchers coming in. You got a righty, lefty, and two, you know, in one inning, and then you got your your eighth and your ninth inning guy. Swing and a miss. Four ball and strikes out. Moeller gets his third. It's no runs, no hits. Two man left. Two nothing Rangers. Cancer history in 1980. On this date, Nolan Ryan and Joe Sambito teamed up to one hit St. Louis. Struggling with the flu, Ryan lasted seven innings before turning it over to Sambito. Jose Cruz drove in both Houston runs. Nice interview with Greg Lucas and Nolan on Astros Live pregame show before the game tonight. And now Nolan has watched Colby Lewis mow down the first nine Astros hitters. Ball one to Michael Bourne and grounded out earlier. Yeah, pretty efficient too. Nine outs on 38 pitches to this point in the game for Lewis. Bunt it. And foul. Easier to bunt the curveball? Probably not. Reason being is when you kind of square, you've got to kind of have to wait for it. When it's a fastball, it doesn't take very long, but he's got to kind of, you know, he's, he's antsy to get going in the box. So the curveball is kind of a little bit tougher to do. Uh, so I think he, it, it, a, a bunter would rather have a fastball to bunts just because he didn't have to wait as long. Temperature on deck, then Berkman. Well, obviously, you know. The leadoff hitter, especially Michael, you know, he, he is the key to our offense. If he gets on base, it makes everything so much easier because the pitcher starts to get nervous. Next thing you know, Berkman, you know, Lee and Pence start walking up. It, you know, it's just a different deal. So uh, hopefully it's not wearing on Michael too much. And he's, I talked to him in the, in the clubhouse today, and he's very upbeat. And obviously you guys know he's a great kid. So he just got to work out a couple of flaws he's got going on right now and get back to what he was doing before. He'll be fine, and then our offense will get charged again. And he's going through a, a tough stretch right here, boy. Yeah. But over 16 now, he's been striking out a lot lately. Yeah, he has. Kepinger takes strike one. Well, and you guys probably have the notes more than I do, but I, I would imagine his walks are down too. 
Mm -hmm. You know, when you start struggling, then you feel like, you know, you start getting in that mode of swing. Uh, I, I don't want to get behind because I'm striking out a lot. I know I got to get on base. So, you know, you end up chasing pitches that you, normally you wouldn't do. When you're going good, you know, you see the ball like a beach ball. You know, oh, I know that ball's three inches outside, or I know that ball's two inches inside. Right now, Michael's probably going through a period where he's not sure where that baseball is on the plate. Carpenter hooked that one foul. It's 0 and 2. And Lewis gets strikeout number six. You know, not overpowering JD, huh? But around the plate, mixing it in with, yeah. you know, three or four different pitches. Yeah, I expect it. When I look at his numbers in the league hitting 197 against him, and he's in the top 10 in strikeout, just about a strikeout for inning. And I expected to see guys go through 95 yeah. miles an hour. And I went next door and I was talking to Tom Brady, and I said, What's going to be telling me about Colby Lewis? He said, Is he a real hard thrower? And he said, No, he's, you know, he's 88 to 92, uh, but good breaking stuff. They kind of, you know, he, he throws enough good breaking pitches to get the hitters off the fastball. Good change up there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got the whole package. You know, it's funny, too, when I came up, if you were throwing 91 like this, you were, you were a pretty decent thrower yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah. Game has changed a little bit. Oh, Lance didn't hurt himself right there. <laughs> I think he did. Yeah, he boy. hurt something. Yeah. It's either oblique or it's hopefully not his knee. That athletic trainer Nate Lucero out. Let's see that swing. Well, he's so far out in front right there. Missed that change up by a bunch. A lot of torque going in, you know, the direction where he's realizing in the middle of that swing, I'm not hitting this ball. It's it's tough, but it seems like he's okay. Looking back, he's laughing right now. He's he's thinking about that Snickers bar again. <laughs> Carlos said something to him. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Lewis misses there, and the count goes to one and one. And you're talking about Lewis, not just the the mix of pitches, but the command. That fastball command has been pretty sharp. Two and one. He threw uh, 119 pitches in eight innings in his last start. Gave up three hits and two runs. Walked one and struck out ten. That's a lot of punch outs. Yeah, I'm telling you, you don't see many guys with ten punch outs anymore. He's done it three or four times this year. Wow. Four times already. Yep. He's ninth in the American League in strikeouts coming into this game. Got all the way. Well, it's kind of 95 right there. Yeah. 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 Extra on that one. Wow. Perfect so far. With 50 pitches. It was interesting that they. Signed him to be a member of their starting rotation after he had pitched the last two years in Japan. They really counted on him, and he's coming through tonight. Wow. He strikes out the side, and he has whiffed seven in the first four. Perfect for four, and it's two nothing.
Fox Sports Houston is brought to you by AT&T, by Capital One, and by Gullo Automotive. They are sizzling. The heat is on the grill right now. Meanwhile, Colby Lewis is sizzling on the mound. With a perfect game, 51 pitches through four. Brian Moeller has allowed a two-run homer to Justin Smoke in the second inning, and he's walked four. He'll be facing Lewis. He get off here in the fifth inning, and Lewis takes ball one. He hit uh, five home runs in his two years in Japan, so he can swing it a little bit. Yeah, he's throwing a perfect game, and he's hitting 400. Yeah, how about that? Babe Ruth stuff. <laughs> Shut it down. Yeah, it's got to be downhill from here, doesn't it? Just, just retire. Well, I think, like, probably all, all three of us right here, we've been pretty impressed with what we see out of him tonight. His command and his stuff, yeah. Location has been great. Bouncer back to Bowler. That's one out here in the fifth inning. Good hard 45 feet. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you just want to kind of hang out of it for a while, make them run down the line. <laughs> I remember guys used to do that. They can make you look bad too. Yeah. <laughs> they start yelling at them halfway down. <laughs> Elvis Andrews is 0 for 2. Fly ball to right, a ground ball to shortstop. Who's the guy that, that you might remember? Is there anybody when you were playing who you said uh, had the most solid technical approach as a hit? Wow. Uh, well, you could talk about Tony Gwynn easy. Yeah. I've never seen anybody really put the, the head of the bat on a baseball better than him. That being said, he, you know, he wasn't really a power hitter. Uh, you know, you, you can move to today's game with Albert. There's no, there's really no movement in his swing. You know, he keeps his hands up high and he goes straight to the baseball. He's very long through it, short, as they say, short to it, long through it. Um, he's very, very impressive. But, uh, and he hits for average and power. And so if I had to, if I had to pick one guy that I've seen, you know, Barry Bonds was probably the best player I've ever played against. Because he did everything. He played defense. Although he didn't have a great arm, he knew how to play left field. He, he could run. He could steal your base. He could hit for power. Uh, he did a little bit of everything. But you give me a couple more years the way Albert's swinging the bat, and I, I just I, I can't say anything more about him. He just he just doesn't have any flaws. Mm -hmm. And he can't run. <laughs> you know he's got a bad foot anyway, but he can't run, and he still hits 330 every year. Two outs. AT&T has some trivia for us, and we'll find the question coming up on the screen. Who are the only four players to have played for both the Rangers and the Astros against their opponents in this uh, title for Silver Boots since 2001? I know one. Actually, I know two. You got to throw them out there? Yeah. Well, we got Jay Powell. Imagine we got Yvonne Rodriguez. Good play by Kepinger on Young. We'll get his other two answers. In the bottom of the fifth inning, it's 2 nothing Rangers.
Fenway Park, Rangers leading it 2 nothing. Now it's time for Chevy at the Park. We'd like to recognize Alan Samuels Chevrolet for their support of the baseball for youth. For more information on Chevy's commitment to youth league baseball programs, go to ChevyTexasBaseball.com. Bill, back to you. Thank you, Bart. There's ball one to Carlos Lee, who popped a short at the second inning. Colby Lewis has retired the first 12 in this game. It's 2 0. Oh. This slider's got some tilt to it, which makes everything else he's throwing a little bit tougher to hit. You got Pudge Rodriguez. Jay Powell who played uh, against both the Rangers and Astros in this Lone Star series. Yeah, now I'm racking my brain after that. Okay, doing well. We need two more, JD. Yeah, I don't know if Jay Powell, I mean, he played for both these clubs, but I don't know if he played during the, uh, in the, uh, in the time frame. Yes, he did. I'm hearing from the truck otherwise. We have a we have dispute then. Well, it's in the notes for the Lone Star series. <laughs> mm. Jay Powell and Fred Rodriguez appear to both teams in the series. Mm. Mm. We're gonna have to throw this question out. And then uh, I'll give you a clue. Mike Lamb. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Nice. Jimmy. Number three, and then another guy who hit 44 homers one year for the Astros. Richard Gildano. You got it. That should be the quartet we're looking for. So unfortunately, we answered everything, and now the fans got no chance. Well, yeah. again, they had the whole inning break to work on it. Exactly. <laughs> That's a foul. Still two balls, two strikes. As Colby Lewis shoots for win number seven. The Rangers have had a couple of losses recently in their starting rotation. Rich Harden is down right now, and he had a setback. The left gluteal muscle. He had to have an injection in that. And Derek Holland. He's on the disabled list as well. And he hurt his knee rehabbing his arm. So he's had a setback. Look, they're plowing along. Three and two. I'll tell you, you know, that, that kid Harden's had a, he's had a tough road of it. He has. I never faced him, but uh, from all accounts, he has tremendous, tremendous stuff and a great arm, but just cannot seem to stay healthy. Yeah. Andrews. Gets lead back to the AT&T trivia question. See, we, we might have gotten this wrong. Who are the only four players to play for both Astros and Rangers against each other? Doug Brokale. Well, we seem to have a discrepancy, but for now we'll accept that. Maybe Jay was on the uh, disabled list. Maybe he was. He might not have gotten in the game. Yeah, he may not have uh, pitched for one of the clubs against the other. But we remember him fondly. Oh yeah. He was a big fan of Minute Maid Park. <laughs> <laughs> or Enron back then. <laughs> I remember the first day in here. A little tap. Never again. Nope. Michael Young juggled him. First yeah, base runner yeah. for the Astros. <laughs> that's, that's no fun for the official score. I mean, it's, it should be a hit. But when that's the first one of the game, it, it, you, 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 as the official score, you prefer it to be a nice, clean single into the outfield. It's a hit. And so for the first time all night, Colby Lewis will work from the stretch. And if you're the Astros, I guess the way he's been, you're thinking, well, maybe this will knock him off his game a little bit. Anything at all. Pedro Feliz. Broken bat roller. Andrews with the toss. Kinsler, the middleman, 6 4 3 double play. And through five, Lewis, even though he gave up the scratch hit, has faced the minimum and leads 2 to nothing.
half. And you'll see a freeze with Brian Moeller on the mound. And look at that pitch. Yep. Michael Young strikes out. The Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by the Frost Brew Coors Light. Young whiffed in the third inning. That's one of three strikeouts for Moeller. Through five, but he trails two to nothing. He walked Murphy and gave up a two-run homer to Smoke in that second inning. He's not going to blow it by you in the strike zone. His game is to try to get you to swing at his pitch. And a great example of it there. All three of those really good pitchers' pitches just dipping down out of the strike zone or off the plate. And in the case of Borbone, way off the plate with that changeup down and away. Ian Kinsler's fly to center and struck out. Broken bat. Manzella. And pitch one out here. And Moeller still can make this his best start, his best so far. Three runs allowed in six innings on the road in Colorado. Well, both pitchers working out a one hitter, the difference being that the one hit for the Rangers left the ballpark with a man on base. But here, Moeller again with some good movement. Shattering that bat flying all the way around him. Yeah, that, that gets scary right there because, you know, you get sometimes those bats can get into the stands and, you know, I'm not, I'm not so sure everybody's worried about the dagger stabbing you in the neck or anything like that, but I think what's happening is you get that barrel that's going to hit some uh, child or man or, or woman or something like that. That's where there can be a problem. And nowadays, it, that I didn't realize, there's actually like a bat police now that comes through spring training, and you have to have so many grooves that are so straight and make the bat look like it's a strong bat. Otherwise, they take the bats away, which I guess is a good thing just in case because you uh, obviously never want to see anybody get hurt. Good jam shot. Yeah, Tommy Manzella pursues it into left field. He really got in on the knuckles of Hamilton there. That's what you talked about that he did uh, against the Yankees so well. Oh, he put on a clinic, you know, for three innings or so anyway. And against those dangerous lefties, he was, he was in the kitchen all night long. Well, you know what Mo does so well, J.D., is he every pitch that comes out of his hand looks the same. You know, the, the arm slot. The, the the downward motion he never nothing like it really pops up you know like a, a big curveball that you kind of can go oh okay now I see it they all come out the same they all have some similar spin uh, and, and I think that's what makes him successful especially when he's you know got command of uh, both sides of the plate so it's a little run this way or right. a little tail that way right. and maybe a little off but but the hitter sees kind of the same thing Murphy's walked twice. It's one and one to him. Probably why he swung at the first pitch. He figured Moeller wasn't going to walk him this time. Two and one. It's a Houston guy. He's got a bunch of family here. He's got to try to do something heroic at some point, doesn't he? Why not? The old Astro Rainbow, only it's been bedazzled. It's diamond studded. Yeah, his mom and dad right now. David's sitting there going, "Come on, man! I came up, you know, I came down here. Glad got a night off. It's time to see something." But I don't know, Jimmy. You can talk about it. There, there's certain guys that you just can't throw strikes yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. Sometimes you just look in, and just the, the look you see with this, a certain hitter, just, it doesn't feel right. Pitch. Feliz takes care of the third out, and Moeller gets him on a 3 1 pitch. Keep the score 2 0 Rangers.
Bottom of the six, 2 nothing Rangers still here at Minute Maid Park. And fans, here's your chance to meet an Astros player and become the ultimate Whataburger Water fan. Come out this Wednesday, June 23rd, for an autograph session with Chris Sampson at the Whataburger location listed below from 11 to noon. While you're there, sign up for a chance to be the ultimate Whataburger Water fan. Brownie, back to you. Thank you, Bart. There is strike one to Kevin Cash, who hit a fly ball to center field in the third inning. 2 nothing Rangers. This ground goes to Michael Young. One out for Lewis. He has faced the minimum, and he'll move on to Manzella now, who struck out looking in the third. I got to give credit to Michael Young right there. He could have thrown Kevin out before he got to the double line right there. He kind of gave it a couple of bumps. Royce Clayton used to do that to me. I hit a hard ground ball to him, and before I got to those double lines, he would throw me out at first base. And I would let him have it every time he got to first base. Strike to Manzella, 0 and 1. There's a certain code. It's like the right fielder that tries, you know, tries to throw the guy out at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're an everyday player. I mean, it's one thing if it's a pitcher, no offense to him. Yeah, well, kind of like when Terry Pendleton tagged me on a bunt. The GP was playing third base. And I bunted down the third baseline. <laughs> and he and ran I, across the I, tag. I started hauling down the first baseline. That's not I feel, right. I feel this brush across my back. And I turn around there. Pendleton, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> You know, I, I, I think that's free free reign to hit somebody in the back. On that <laughs> that's strikeout number eight for Lewis. There are certain things in this game that, you know, you just don't do. I guess A-Rod did that earlier this year, running over the mound. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Corey Sullivan's a pinch hitter now. We have both in action for the Astros. They trail two to nothing. They've had only an infield hit. So, Brian Moeller's out of the game after six very good innings. Very good innings. Gave up just one hit, two runs. He walked four, struck out three. Sullivan right back into the glove of Lewis. And through six, he has still faced the minimum and leads two to nothing. At the park, we'd like to once again recognize Alan Samuel Chevrolet for their support of Baseball for Youth. For more information on Chevy's commitment to youth league baseball programs, go to ChevyTexasBaseball.com. Brownie, up to you. Thank you, Bart. Our call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon Wireless, bringing in Tim Burdak in this 2 nothing game after Brian Moeller pitched so well for the first six. But once again, he's turned away in his uh, shot at his first win since August 22nd last year. And Burdak comes in with smoke who up first, so he'll turn him around about right handed. He is 1 0 with a 6.46 ERA. And even though smoke homered from the right side last night, he's been a lot better as a left handed hitter, so advantage here with the lefty coming in to turn smoke around. In theory, anyway, we'll see how it plays out. Then Ramirez, the catcher to follow, and then Borbon, the uh, Center fielder also swings from the left side, and Brad Mills 
And continues to work with three left handed arms in his bullpen. A luxury that he has enjoyed for a little while now, for most of the year, has been just the one. And also has Sheen and Wesley right out there. Not so sure how it's going to all shake out with Bud Norris uh, on, the, on the man working his way back. Chris Sampson as well. Smoke with a home run in the second inning and bounced into a force play in the fourth. And there's ball one to him. The home run he hit right handed last night was his second in 56 at bats from this side of the plate. And his batting average 125 is a right handed bat. Went to the same high school as Matt Weeders, the catcher with the Orioles. Goose Creek, South Carolina. Ever been to Goose Creek, Baggy? I have not. I imagine there's not a lot of people that have been to Goose Creek. Come on, man. Yeah. Been to Goose Creek, you haven't lived. <laughs> Two and oh. Back delivers ball three. Tim pitching in Kansas City both Tuesday and Thursday, and the Astros losses there did not give up a run. And he's put scoreless ball in his last three outings. Strike makes it three one. Brad Mills said tonight before the game that he will not keep the 13 man pitching staff after interleague play ends, which will be a week from tomorrow. They drop back to a 12 man staff. Three two. Uh, and the, you know, with the uh, series in New York, then in Kansas City, and then in Texas next weekend. So three of those four series on the road uh, where you're using the DH, so you don't need as many available pinch hitters. You like to have the extra arms, especially against that Yankee lineup and then the Rangers, especially up in Arlington, things can get out of control up there. Last night, Wandy Rodriguez batted in the third inning, even though he'd given up six in the top of the inning. And the Astros did not plan to send him back out for the fourth just because they didn't want to use a pinch hitter at that early point in the game with only four bench players. Well, also in Arlington, you know, you're going to use a DH, so it's not like you make a lot of a lot of moves when you have a DH. So exactly. They can keep those 13 men in the bullpen. Smoke has his second hit of the night. Both of the Rangers' hits have come from their first sack. And he's aboard for Ramirez. Ramirez has walked both times tonight. There was a wild one in Philadelphia. Minnesota beat the Phillies in the 11, 13 to 10. They scored five in the ninth to tie the game. They each scored one in the tenth, and then the Twins scored three in the eleventh. Brad Lidge got a blown save. He gave up two of those five runs in the ninth. About nine home runs hitting that game. Yeah, it's crazy. Our scout report didn't go over him as Manny Ramirez, did he? We got to uh, <laughs> M Ramirez on the lineup card. Everybody's a little nervous. Yeah, we got a, a little sinker on the outside, a little ground ball to Tommy. The cap to Berkman, I think, will work out real nice for us right here. No offense to Max, but yeah. he's got two walks also. He had a pretty good call shot on Smoke back in the fourth inning. I know, Cap killed me on that one. <laughs> two yeah, other that, Tommy had good movement on that changeup, that little five finger throw to, to the second baseman. Well, going on deck here in the seventh inning. It's two and one for Tim Burdak. Yeah, so Max Ramirez is probably saying to himself, okay, these guys have no right. idea who I am. I'm hitting 218. I'm in the seven hole in the lineup here, and he's throwing two me a 2 0 break yeah. Well, yeah. let me tell you how this works. When you get like that and you're not used to walking, you, you want to swing. And ground ball and goes through the hole. Ramirez with a single, smoked a second, two on, nobody out for Borbon now. He got that one kind of right in the middle of the play, Jimmy, didn't he? Yeah, this left it up a little bit. And I think sometimes what happens, I don't know it used to happen to me a lot. You think a guy's looking for a fastball, so you decide to throw a breaking ball and you, you just cast it a little bit and you're just trying yeah. to leave it in the strike zone. And if he does stay back on it, you, you know, he's got you.
Well, the good news for us right here is he's probably not going to bunt unless that kid Lewis really is that good a hitter. <laughs> well, Bones over two, fly ball and a strikeout. Well, he does bunt, but it's foul. Well, Lewis did something that had never been done by a Texas Ranger pitcher in his last game. He had two hits, he drove in two runs. Maybe he is that good. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I guess maybe what Ron Washington is saying if he gets a successful bunt down here, puts runners on second and third, and the Astros this stage of the game maybe cheat the infield in, but it is it's, it's a little bit of a curious play. Maybe the maybe the player was doing it on his yeah, own. Probably more. Yeah, probably more. thinking, you know, maybe sometimes sometimes we give we talked about earlier about giving hitters and pitchers too much credit. Sometimes we give players too much credit, assuming they understand the game. And I mean but all you gotta do is talk to a big league coach and they'll tell you one story after another, scratching their heads going, What was this guy thinking? Oh yeah, no doubt. We say that as players looking at our players. What was what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you ever go up to a guy and say that? Teammate? <laughs> More than you can imagine. <laughs> can you tell me exactly what you were thinking about in that situation? I would imagine that coming from Jeff Bagwell, if you played a game for 12 or 13 years or so, that might be a little intimidating to a young guy, but they probably understood what that was all about. Well, as long as they understood why I was saying it, that was the main thing. It was not that I was just saying it to, you know, show that I had leadership or whatever. It's just that, you know, the game should be played a certain way. And, you know, as long as they understood that. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing was probably not the best thing for our ball club. Then, then that's all that really mattered. Mm -hmm. Two and two to Barbon. Now, if this kid, if his game is to bunt, you know, maybe in a situation like this, maybe he wants to try and bunt for a hit. I'm not so sure even that's a good plan. But because uh, you still have the pitcher on deck. Yeah, and what you're doing is you're, 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 you're setting up a situation. Like you can't imagine they're not going to hit for the pitcher here with the game he's got going. So you're setting no, up a sir. situation where if he bunts and gives himself up, even though Lewis is a good hitting pitcher, he's still a pitcher. So basically what you're saying, if, if you sacrifice there, is you're willing to give Elvis Andrews one shot at driving those two runs in. And Andrews a good hitter, but he's not a great run producer. you got Michael Young behind him. I don't want to give any outs up. Michael Bourne backs. There's a tag at second by Smoke. Born will go and he stays. Thanks for thanks for that. I appreciate that one. <laughs> Good on target throw by Michael, who leads the majors in outfield assists with seven. Now Lewis, but Brad Mills is on his way out. I guess that was a tweener. I'm not sure. That looked pretty deep. It did. Wilson Lopez in a 2 nothing game is being called in. So that's a show of respect with the pitcher coming up next. And that's going to be the matchup. When
on that in just a moment. Kids Free All Summer, presented by Minute Maid, is back this summer. For every full price adult ticket you purchase in the outfield or view deck sections, you can get up to two free tickets for kids 14 and under. Kids can also earn rewards for coming to Astros games with the Kids Passport Program. Go to Astros.com for more information and tickets. Brownie, back to you. Thanks, Bart. Wilton Lopez in the game. The official attendance is 41,060. That's a sellout. And Wilton Lopez has not allowed any inherited runners to score. There have been 16 this year, JD. Yeah, well, Wilton working for the 23rd time. Three wins, no losses. We'll be Lewis up there. We'll be looking to sacrifice. I'm guessing. Workman's guessing. And it's popped up. Feliz lets it drop now. He drops it and throws and gets the out at first. So the sacrifice gets smoked to third base and mirrors the yeah, second. Well, he did the right thing, letting it drop to get the double play, and then the mishandle took away the option and went ahead and got the out at first base. Play it popped up like that. He knows the base runners have to free, so he's thinking, let it drop, try to get two that way. and Peaked a little bit. Yeah. So the inning could have been over had that worked, but now two outs, and it's Elvis Andrews who's 0 for 3. Clint Hurdle is the hitting coach. Joined the Rangers over the winter with Rudy Jaramillo moving on to the Cubs. Well, Jimmy, this is what you said. No matter what we talked about earlier, yeah, <laughs> three hitters ago, this is what we got. Yeah, this is their one chance. You know, looking at that replay, I'm not sure they would have been able to get the force at second base because with Lance coming so hard, Ramirez had such a big lead at, at first base. Even if Pedro doesn't mishandle that ball, it might have been a bang bang play at second. It might have been. He was almost halfway there. Rangers are 13 and 4 in June. Pretty good June. Yes, it is. Good June. And Nolan Ryan talked about it on the pregame interview on Astros Live with Greg Lucas. Typically, what they've been concerned about is wearing down in the second half in the heat in Arlington. He said that's why we have veterans like Vladimir Guerrero, Michael Young, who hopefully can lead the way for the younger guys and tell them how to handle things, show them how to handle things. I got to imagine that's.
with that mindset, you get a little cautious, maybe start to nibble a little bit. First time he's had to deal with a man in scoring position. And he's probably looking on deck, too. Got Lance there. He's got nose. He's got Carlos coming up. Rangers bullpen has seen a ton of work lately, but got a bit of a blow last night. That's popped up. Andrus looking out to Barbon, and Barbon has it. Oh, pretty, pretty good pitch there. You saw in the yeah. Fox pitch tracker how he'd been working him away, 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 and then he got that fastball in on him, jammed him. Well, we just talked about that a second ago, Jimmy. He, he seen, well, you know, see, he wasn't even trying yeah, to jam him. Trying to get yeah. it in there. But he gets a little extra when he needs it. Yeah, not, uh, I mean, I think that was the pitch. I like the idea of going in there. They weren't they obviously weren't trying to go in there, but we're going to go back to the same thing we've talked about the whole time. We give them too much credit, so he's going to go back in. He goes, he tried and jam me right there, yeah. three one. Yeah, yeah. And then he's going to go, oh my God, he was actually trying to go away. Yeah. <laughs> so your head gets kind of messed up now, going, oh my God. Berkman has struck out both times tonight. Kinsler to his right. The old adage on that too, Jimmy, was I remember Yogi talking all the time about catchers. I don't understand why catchers set up on the corners. That's ridiculous. If I if I set down the middle the entire time, how many times could you hit my mitt? <laughs> you know, and, and you know, different air, all that kind of stuff. You know, specializing on outside corner, inside corner, but he's saying you can't do it. Let your natural movement and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, especially the guys with good movement. Yeah. Carlos Lee's 0 for 2. Yogi would really have a hard time selling that argument to Tom Glavin. Huh. You think? This is where the big fella usually shines right here. Mm -hmm. Getting late in the game. Mark on deck. One and one. Same pitch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See, it's at 93 now. I mean, he's, he's got a little something when he needs it. He's only thrown 81 pitches. Sorry, I was a little off. Yeah. <laughs> quarter of an inch out. Sorry about that one. Yeah, you see that one drifting in again, trying to go away. And, and, and that's what I was talking about earlier. You start to maybe try to overthrow a little bit, try to muscle up, and you lose command. Gets by the catcher. Here comes Bourne, and he scores. You take it. Two to one ball game as Bourne scores on the ball that got by Ramirez. We talked earlier about Max Ramirez being a little bit deficient defensively. This one goes right through the five hole. And the Astros had the perfect man on base there to take advantage of it. Ball came back to Ramirez in pretty good shape, but Bourne beats Lewis. Beat the throw. Astros on the board. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to get on Max a little bit, but a little lazy on a breaking ball right there, just trying to backhand it and stab it. You know, he, he's got to kind of move his feet a little bit. I'm glad he didn't, uh, but uh, that, that's the way to, to make that play is you kind of kind of move your feet and get your chest in your in your lower half in front of that ball. Two two now to lead and a full count. I still haven't seen a ruling on that, whether it be a wild pitch or pass ball. It'll probably be a wild, wild pitch, pitch yeah. but, but, you know, Ramirez has got to do a better job of trying to block it, too. And a strikeout. And in the seventh, the Astros come up with one run on one hit. It's two to one Rangers after seven.
Family of Champions series follow former UT quarterback Colt McCoy and his father Brad McCoy and Alabama quarterback Greg McElroy and father Greg McElroy Sr. throughout the young men's football careers and culminating in the 2010 BCS National Championship game. Spend Father's Day with us and don't miss the Chick-fil-A Family of Champions series premiering Sunday at 10 o'clock only on Fox Sports Houston. Ready? Thank you, Bart. Two to one ball game. The run scored for the Astros on a wild pitch by Lewis, his third of the year. Now it's Brandon Lyon in for the eighth inning. Young Kinsler and Hamilton do up. Wilson Lopez, two thirds of an inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Tim Burdak, one third of an inning, two hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Lyon's five and one. His first pitch is away. Ball one to Young. Lyon worked a scoreless inning Wednesday with a 4 2 lead in the eighth at Kansas City. Fly ball to right, 100 pence. And out. Young is 0 for 4. Now it's Kinsler. He's 0 for 3. A lot of offers in this ball game tonight. Just five hits total three for the Rangers, two for the Astros. Boy, man, the Rangers have been swinging the bat lately. That's pretty impressive work by Brian Moeller. That sure it was. Kinsler is flied to center, struck out, and grounded out. I think Big Lou's temperature in uh, Chicago is right now. How oh, about boy, they got something in today. 12 zip, the Angels beat them. Cubs managed two hits. Ted Lilly lost it. He's two and six now. Oh and two the count. Lyon has been putting together some very good outings, seven in a row without allowing a run. The Astros struggling to win games lately has not had a lot of appearances. He appeared three games in a row in that Colorado series. The Astros winning all three of those. It's two and two. When you're hitting and the catcher stands up a la Yogi from 1952. Can you feel it? Can you sense the catchers up like that? No, nah, you know what? Generally, when that happens, well, yeah, you can, you know, and especially with two strikes, doesn't happen, you know, unless you have two strikes. Uh, when you know you got a guy like me who. Very tough. Who will swing at the high fastball, but. Done by Hunter to keep Kinsler off base. Mohawk comes to the rescue. Yes, <laughs> the Comanche warrior. <laughs> yep. Getting it done. Giving up the body. That's two outs. Now it's Hamilton. I don't think you can sense it, Jimmy, when he's standing up. I think you can sense the pitch that that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't feel him standing up, you know, up around your chest, but you can. You kind of get the idea. This is what he wants to do. He's going to try, and, you know, throw a high fastball and then try and either throw me a curveball or a slider in the dirt. So he'll, I'll take the high one and then I'll swing at the slider in the dirt. <laughs> Since I know it's coming. How about the the old rules where the catcher will set up inside, come his mitten, and slide outside? Does that affect the hitter at all? Or those no, guys not at all. Their time? The only time that really anything I remember is that you could actually hear the catcher move late. You could hear his cleats kind of skip across the dirt a little bit, and you kind of had an idea that you know fastball in or you know really away wasn't a big deal. It was, it was in. And I used to stand close to the plate earlier in my career, so I could really feel it. Jam shot over shortstop Manzella out a looping hit for Hamilton. About the exact same spot he hit the last one, just a little bit harder off his hands. Well, he has a 15-game hitting streak. So you're saying he made an adjustment. Yeah, Lance would be <laughs> proud of that one. <laughs> That's a career high hitting streak for Hamilton. Talk about Moeller. 
being effective working that cutter in. That, that's a big weapon for Brandon Lyon, too. Cutter in on the left-handers. I'm telling you right now, Lance is telling him, nice hitting right there. The defense had you played for it the first time. You had to go back for it for the second time. David Murphy. Ball one. And drawn two walks. Boston came up with a run in the bottom of the ninth at Fenway and beat the Dodgers 5-4. Manny Ramirez hit a home run for Los Angeles, his eighth. Hamilton with the longest hitting streak in the American League right now at 15. We got Manny got booed a little bit when he's running around the bases. Yeah, a little bit, probably. They treated him pretty well last night, but I don't think he Did had a hit last night. <laughs> uh, one for five last night. Oh, okay. Two and oh. I heard some report when somebody said the uh, somebody was on the scene and they reported 70 30 negative was the reaction when oh. they was introduced last night. Okay. Some applause, but a lot of boos. You have to applaud them a little bit if you're a diehard Red Sox fan, haven't you know, had a World Series since what was it, 1918, something yeah. like that? Yeah. And he's a part of two. And he's a part of two, but you know, towards the end, once you start saying, I want out of here. Uh, that's going to turn a fan base around pretty quick. Sure it is. Especially Just the, that one. That one, yeah. Murphy looks at a strike. It's three. Toronto shut out the Giants three nothing. Yeah, you know we talked about the Astros of pitchers and the lack of run support, and it certainly has been an issue. Matt Kane. Of the Giants, boy, he's <laughs> don't score him any runs. Six and five with a 2.16 ERA. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a hang with him. We we'll see him uh, this next series. The Giants come to town. Who else we got in that series? Well, we've got uh, Lincecum. Yeah. Uh, Oswald Lincecum on Tuesday. Uh, Myers and Zito on Wednesday, and Wandy and Kane. The big three. Uh, Thursday, yeah, so the three. We saw in that opening series. Mm -hmm. They're back. Barry Zito's turned it around. He has. Yeah. Uh, there was. Uh, I, don't got, I don't know if you guys been reading in the paper, which I'm sure you have been, but they were comparing uh, Jimenez in, in Colorado to Gibson, and you're talking about run support. Gibson was like what, two and five with like a one, <laughs> one four or something like that. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. Somebody was saying he lost five one to nothing games in '68. Look out. And and well, that, the, the year of the pitcher. I mean, he, I, he, obviously his his one one two ERA that year is the, the thing that jumps out at you. But there was a bunch of like Tiant had a one sixty three or something like that to lead the American League. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, McLean one thirty one, right? Yes. Yep. I bet they were all jealous of my McLean too. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of Ubaldo's offensive support just went away. The injury to Tulowitzki. Oh, a line to the right. Hunter over to cut it off. He falls. And that means one run scores. And Dave Anderson's going to stop the trailing runner Murphy as it's three to one now. And the smoke ripped that one. We didn't, know, to, we didn't know much about Justin Smoke before he came to town, but <laughs> pretty good buck on him when we head to Arlington next weekend. This kid is lighting it up. Well, we talked about it earlier, Jimmy. I said when he, once you start throwing your hands inside like that, you're on the right track to doing something well. And you know, I said a little earlier. I said, you know, we got to watch out for that. He, kids going in the right direction right now. Drove in four last night. Yeah. Three here tonight. Now Vladimir Guerrero comes up to pinch it for the catcher Ramirez. And Guerrero was the starting right fielder in last night's game. And Vladdy was a cleanup man. He was 0 for 3, drew a bases loaded walk as the Astros ended his 13 game hitting streak. Win, lose, or draw, this is not going to take a long time right here. <laughs> 5 for 17 in his career as a pinch hitter. Not very many at bats. Been an everyday guy. 1 for 2 this season, pinch hitting. Uh, it's, it's interesting because I think the situation where you know, you're going to pitch. You're going to pitch Vladimir Guerrero here like like you've got no two count on him to start. You're just going to try to make your perfect pitcher's pitches and try to get him to chase. The problem with that is 
Um, you've got to go beyond that right. when you're facing Guerrero because yeah, he's he, farther he, out yeah, now than yeah, you just did. Yeah, look look how far yeah. Cash is out there right now. <laughs> in the center field for a pinch hit, RBI single for Guerrero, four to one Rangers. Well, Vladdy comes off the bench cold and delivers. See me. Sometimes when the catcher sets up way out like that, it can be a little disconcerting for the pitcher. You're just not trained to throw the ball that far off the plate. But uh, he missed the spot trying to go way off the plate and it drifted back and maybe up, up and you know, just just where where Guerrero could reach it. I mean, that's kind of Jimmy. Not only did he reach it, he reached it with his barrel. Yeah, yeah. He's so long and strong. That's it, number six for the Rangers. Now poor ball. You know some. Could probably second guess Brad Mills for not walking Guerrero there, but that's not an easy call. You've got a guy who's coming off the bench fresh as a pinch hitter. That's not an easy thing to do. If you walk him, you force line to pitch in a bases loaded situation to a left handed hitter. I mean, if they opted to put Guerrero on him, you couldn't really second guess that move either. It's tough. I mean, and Jimmy, this is you know, this is our eighth inning guy. This is you know the guy that that's going to be in there to face you know Vlad or whoever. So it's right. You don't want to. You know, you, you, and he usually has very good location, so you yeah. trust him to execute the game plan. You know, second and third is it's not a, you know it's not even a thought process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up the middle, it rolls to Manzella's left, and the throw to first base. And the Rangers eighth, but they get two runs on three hits and strand two. It's four to one Rangers. Pence. Astro stars are missing from the list of top vote getters for the 2010 All Star Game in Anaheim. Help them climb the charts for this year's All Star Game by voting up to 25 times at Astros.com, and you'll also be entered in a sweepstakes for a great prize. Brownie, back up to you. Thank you, Bart. Rangers lead it four to one. About hit the Astros six to two. Big crowd tonight, 41,060 at Minute Bay Park, and they watch Colby Lewis. Pitch an outstanding game. He has a new battery made now. Matt Trainer takes over. Ramirez left for the pinch hitter Guerrero, who delivered an RBI single. Lewis has struck out nine. He's allowed just two hits, and no walks through seven. 85 pitches. So back to Hunter Pence. I guess you couldn't say they had him on the ropes, but they finally got to him in the seventh inning. Bourne scoring that run after the leadoff double, but now those two runs of the Rangers put him in the top of the inning gives him a little. Breathing room and a chance to regroup where he looked a little vulnerable last inning. Now he's got that comfort zone back with a three run lead.
Backhanded by Young. One out. Wow. Pretty smooth over there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty slick. Oh, pretty well struck. And then stands his ground, hangs in there, and makes a nice backhanded play on it. Well, was not very thrilled prior to last season when he was told he was moving to third base, but he didn't work hard at it. Yeah, you got to give him credit moving over. You know, he's got this, they're going to bring up this young kid. He's going to be their starting shortstop. He's not proven yet. But over there, did a great job. He did. Pop up. And Andrews takes care of out number two. Well, you, you know, you got to look at situations like that. What's best for the ball club? You got a nice, you know, young 21 year old kid. You got a, you know, fairly young second baseman, veteran in Michael. Uh, it, it just it makes your ball club better. And the whole key with Texas is, and we've all known this for years, is it's about their pitching. Uh, if they get solid pitching, then you know they're, they're going to be a good team. But like Jimmy had talked about, wearing down in you know September and August. To Hopper Cash. <laughs> Very quick eighth inning for Lewis. He's in good shape now. Try to complete this ball game, leading it 4 to 1. Single now Brad Mills comes out to the mound and Brad had said before the game that he wanted to get Brandon Lyon in this game but not so anxious to get Matt Lindstrom in because Mac uh, Lindstrom had, had some back spasms so it's going to be Casey Daigle here in this four to one game and Daigle will come in to face the pitcher Lewis right after this.
ace. There's her husband, Casey Daigle. He has no decisions, an ERA of 7.20 as he comes in for the ninth. I guess Brad Mills uh, wanting to make sure that Lewis was going to get this at bat waiting in case they threw a left handed pinch hitter up there before he made the move to the pen, or maybe just trying to buy a little extra time for Casey to get ready to work this top half of the ninth. But anyway, Brandon is gone, Casey Daigle on. And this is one of the best feelings in the world for a pitcher getting your fourth at bat in the ball game or plate appearance anyway. And Lewis fouls it away strike one. Well he's 0 for 2 with a sack bunt tonight. Maybe Millsy was thinking Ron Washington would change his mind. Not put him up there give him a pinch hitter. Maybe. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And it's 0 and 2. Lewis in that last game when he went two for four, two runs batted in, became the first American League pitcher with two more hits, two more RBIs, and a 10 strikeout game since Mickey Lolich in 1971 for Detroit. Now back. Still 0 and 2 to Colby Lewis. And this has to be a very pleasing sight. Ron Washington, Nolan Ryan, Mike Maddox, seeing a Ranger pitcher about to pitch in the ninth inning in a few minutes. They've had three complete games from their staff this year. I gotta imagine Nolan's very excited about this. Right down there. They've been talking it for the last couple of years over there in Arlington. This is Nolan moved in about. Extending their pitchers, asking more from their starting pitchers. Of course, Lewis hasn't let that many pitches tonight, so this isn't an instance where they're really stretching him in terms of the pitch count. But uh, that man loves to see a starting pitcher on the bump in the ninth inning. Well, that was nice. Nolan right there traded in Colt McCoy for his wife tonight. Ruth, you know what I mean? It's kind of a it's kind of embarrassed. He has much, much bigger, much, much, much upgrade of Colt McCoy <laughs> with his wife Ruth. We'll take Ruth anytime. Elvis Andrews with strike one. Brandon Lyon, one inning, allowed three hits, two runs. He had a walk and no strikeouts. Daigle's the fifth Houston pitcher tonight. It's a one ball, one strike count. The Astros have Manzella. Pitcher spot and Bourne do up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Just in case action going on in the uh, Rangers bullpen. It looked like if Tali Feliz was one of those pitchers, couldn't really quite tell through the screen in the bullpen. Jimmy, you think when uh, Nolan goes to those meetings at spring training and he, he goes down there and it, those uh, minor league coordinators and or pitching coaches and all that go and they start talking about pitch counts he has to put a pencil in his mouth and just start chewing on it because yeah, he, he can't even think about it when he was throwing 140 and 150 pitches a game you see him kind of taking it all in and then <laughs> leaning back well well yeah exactly <laughs> here's what I'm thinking good pick right by Feliz two outs and now it's Michael Young coming up Young's over for four tonight. But, you know, and I, I, I think that would be a challenge for a guy like Nolan, who's had so much success in the game and, you know, is a, is a big icon um, to go into those meetings. You don't want to just stomp on people. Obviously, he has a lot of credibility, but, you know, those guys know the game too and they've worked right. hard. And you, you've got to be, I think you've got to be careful and somewhat political about the way you handle it. I just want to. Well, I think you said it exactly how it is. He goes, he listens to everything and, and sits back and goes, well, this is what yeah, I think. Yeah. We've been around him enough. That's exactly yeah. what he says. <laughs> and I think he, you know, he, he leaves it at that. I don't. Th I think you're right. I don't think he sits there and goes, "Well, this is what we're going to do." Right. He goes, "This is what I think." Well, that must have been a pretty good conversation he had prior to last season with Kevin Millwood about trying to go deeper into games, getting into better physical condition, and being a leader on the staff. It certainly worked. With Jackie Moore from Bel Air High School, who knows. A lot about baseball. The legend of the Round Rock, right there. Yeah. Oh Skipper down there for years, and bench coach now. Fly ball, right field. Hunter Pence backing. He's out of room and right. That's an opposite field shot. Michael Young takes the tour after home run number eight. 
Five to one Rangers as Young goes deep. And I was kind of hoping he wouldn't get another turn tonight because uh, when they got him out last time, he's 0 for 4. There's not a whole lot of 0 for 5 on that man's resume. Last time up, he almost went deep to right field, hit a high breaking ball a good long way. This time he got, I believe, a fastball from Casey Daigle. Trying to go down and away, and it drifted back over the plate a little bit. Hunter will run through a wall for you, but can't get to that one. Well, we talked about that earlier, too, Jimmy. You know, obviously we haven't given up that many hits. That's our seventh hit. But, you know, once you start walking guys and stuff like that, when you're when they're going to get their their ninth at bat, you're turning yeah. the lineup over, and they're going to get another chance. So that fit that bat that you were talking bat, about. Yeah. Yeah. Rangers have drawn five walks tonight. They drew seven last night. One and one. And because the Lewis was so efficient, the, uh, the bottom of the ninth for the Astros is at the bottom of the order, and Tommy Manzella, if he bats, he's only had two ABs tonight. He'll be back for just the third time. It's two and one to Kinsler with Hamilton on deck. Kinsler's eight game hitting streak on the line. Rangers are averaging 4.3 runs on the road, 5.9 at home. Police in the ninth inning, the young homer gives the starter Colby Lewis a four-run lead as he tries for his first major league complete game, five to one. By your Texas Ford dealers in the 2010 F-150 and by the Progressive Insurance Group. Colby Lewis is trying for his first major league complete game here and shooting for win number seven of the year. He leads it five to one. Facing Tommy Manzella as the home ninth gets underway with Jason Michaels on deck. Michael Bourne to up third. Lewis has thrown 90 pitches. Lewis has gone nine innings in a game this year, but it wasn't a complete game because he pitched nine scoreless at Seattle and the Rangers won it in the 12th, two to nothing. The ball's two strikes. Pretty efficient right there. 92 pitches in the ninth. 13 in any inning. One and two. Last time out, he went eight innings of three hit ball, allowed two runs, a couple of solo home runs with the Prince Fielder. The Prince had a, a cold that day, he might have had a no no. <laughs> Five ball to right. Murphy waiting. One out. The first hit. Off Lewis was an infield hit to third by Hunter Pence in the fifth inning, and then he was erased on a double play ball. Michael Bourne doubled to right in the seventh and scored on a wild pitch. Those are the only two base runners in this game. 
Casey Michaels a pinch hitter now for Casey Daigle. 29 career pinch hit average with six homers, 37 runs batted in. Last night, he delivered a pinch RBI single in the sixth. All one to J. Mike. Got a chance to start four games on the road trip. Well, he did good work on the road trip, too, so he'll probably get some starts down here in Arlington also. It's 2 0. Oh. That's where the Astros will be next weekend. They play the Giants starting Tuesday night here. The Thursday game is a day game here. J. Mike now is 6 for 13 in his last four games with six runs batted in. Two balls and a strike. Coming over is smoked. Two outs. That's eight straight retired by Lewis since the Michael Bourne double. And now Michael Bourne comes up. So kind of a Strasburg has for this performance tonight. Yeah. Looking to close out a complete game. 100 pitches or so. 98 right now. Kind of funny to be comparing anybody, you know, Steven Strasburg. Three yeah. starts in his career, yeah. but the, this guy's almost as good as Strasburg. Yeah. <laughs> Jack DeBar. Well, Lewis is one of only three pitchers with four 10 strikeout games this year. Tim Lincecum and Giovanni Gallardo, the others. And I get number 10 to end it. Oh, and two. Strike after strike after strike. Go a couple ways now and go way up with that heater. We got Michael earlier in the game with a fastball up and away. Taking ball down. Looks like. A little chop to shortstop. Fielded by Andrews. And Colby Lewis has his first major league complete game. Win number seven of the season. Beating Brian Moeller is 0 and 4. And pitching reigning supreme for Ron Washington tonight, Jeff Bagwell. Yeah, that really has. He was just uh, very, very impressive. First time I've seen uh, this kid pitch. I guess he's not really a kid anymore, but uh, what a find for Texas. Have him come over here, give him a two-year deal, and he certainly uh, just just a strike-throwing machine with good stuff. And uh, we just got outpitched tonight. Brian did a great job, but uh, he was a little bit better. And the Rangers have won seven in a row. They take this one. Final score, Texas 5 and Houston 1.